My dear madam, my constituent, Mr. Oliver Beasley, will be very glad to dedicate the new poorhouse. If he's not elected, he will probably move over there permanently. P.S. We hope we get several of your votes in the coming campaign. Ah, oh, good morning, Beasley. Good morning, nothing. What's the matter? Listen, Hives, unless something radical is done before that convention starts tomorrow morning, I won't even be nominated. I'll be squashed. And as my campaign manager, you've got to do something, and do it quick. Now hold your horses, Beasley. Let me think. And it's campaign cigars like this that make you think. My own invention, but I'm not bragging. <laughs> Proceed, bees. Listen, I must get that nomination, I tell you. It's for the good of the party. The good of, of the, the party. party. You're right, and I'm going to give you action, Beasley. Take a letter, Roger. Take another. You take one, too, Beasley. Now think of a number up to six. Four. No, I was thinking a nine. <laughs> bah! I double your bar. Now, sir, do you think men are mice? Yes. Oh, you do, eh? Take that. Oh, oh my stomach, my stomach. Oh. Look, the boss is a ballet dancer. <laughs> Come calm, enough of this foul de row. Tell me what's wrong. I'll tell you what's wrong. Do you realize that Commodore Amos Pip may get this nomination instead of me? He must be smart. Oh, yeah? Will you leave Commodore Amos Pip to me? Oh, so you won't jump, eh? I'll show you that B. Oglethorpe Hives is himself again. Insubordination. Don't go away. I'll be right back. By tomorrow morning, we'll have Commodore Amos Pip out of the race. <laughs> there you are. Now we're getting results around here. <laughs> Come on, Blodgett. Beasley wants action. Uh, hey! Have those sewed up before you make any more campaign speeches. <laughs> ah! <laughs> so long, Beasley. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Beasley. Mrs. Beasley? Why so formal? Just call me Sylvia. Okay, Sylv. You know we're all comrades in this campaign. Remember our slogan, for the good of the party. Huh? <laughs> I got <gotcha>. you. <laughs> for the good of the party. Is my husband in? He's half in and half out. He's in his office, but out of his pants. <laughs> See you later, silly. Sorry, we haven't a room left in the hotel. But I must sleep someplace. Well, you can put your clothes in the check room and we'll give you a cot. A cot? Yeah. Thanks, that'll be fine. That's the Countess. They say she's a sleepwalker. Pardon me, madam, uh, what did you say? I said she's a sleepwalker. Oh. Yes, and they say she owns a haunted castle. It's been brooded about that the dog is haunted also. The dog is haunted? Yes, with fleas. Oh. <laughs> Roger, there's Commodore Amos Pip now. That's the guy that Beasley wants squashed. Wonder what he's looking at. Ah, so that's his game. Blodgett, now I know his weakness. It's women. Right, even as you and I. I know what I'll do. I'll dress you up in woman's clothes and frame the Commodore with you. Me? I'd never be able to make a good-looking woman. You'd have trouble making an ugly-looking woman. But this is no time. Hurry up, Blodgett. I can't hold the Commodore at bay much longer. He's straining at the leash. Okay, I'm all ready for him. Don't I look alluring? Oh, you look brutal. 
You look ghastly. You look terrible. <whistles> Even the Commodore wouldn't fall for a buzzard like you. Well, I feel girlish. Girlish, my eye. What's the spear for? Well, the man said it goes with the costume. Well, well, Bertha, the whaler's daughter. Listen, Blodgett, we're only going to frame the Commodore, not harpoon him. Oh, you look terrible. Come over here. Turn around. Look at your dress. It's all crooked in the back. Wait till I straighten it out for you. Here, here, here. You can't do that. I'm the house detective. But I must sleep someplace. Well, uh, uh. Say, we don't allow no ukulele playing in this hotel. Ukulele? Yes, ukulele. Where can I sleep? Uh, further down. Further down? Yes. Thanks. That'll be fine. Hmm. Just as I suspected, a dope fiend. What's coming off here? Why, nothing. That is, uh, we well, I know, oh, I know. But remember, you two, we don't allow no ukulele playing in this hotel. I know, but we were just... Well, I, don't try it. You can't get away with it. Not while I'm on the job. Oh, well, I can see that, officer. Well, all right. Go ahead. But remember, no ukulele playing. What time is it? I don't know. Well, I fooled him. He thought I was a woman. You might have fooled him. He's nearsighted. But you'll never be able to fool the Commodore. He'll be much more critical. There's no use talking, Blodgett. I've got to find a real woman to carry out my plan. Yes, but who? That's the question, who? Let me think. I got it. I oh, pardon me. Well, a wandering gigolo. What do you want? Uh, well, I have no place to sleep, so I thought I'd come in this room and sleep in this cot. Well, that's out of the question tonight. <laughs> I realize that now. No, you don't. I suppose I'll just have to keep on roaming around the hallway. Now, wait a minute. I wouldn't turn a dog out in the hallway of a hotel like this, even if the dog looked like you. I'll tell you what I'll do. I've engaged this uh, next room for some special business tonight. <laughs> I understand. No, you don't understand. However, I may not need this room all night. In case I finish with it earlier, you may come back and sleep in there. In there? Not, not, not now. No? Later, perhaps, but not now. <laughs> I'll just hang around. All right. You'll pardon me, madam. Oh, that's all right. Uh, that'll be fine. I wonder. Oh, these interruptions are becoming disgruntling. And now, as I was going to say, Blodgett... Burglars! Courage, Murgatroyd. What do you know about that? Boys will be boys. Maybe that burglar was a ukulele player. Yeah. Now, as I was going to say, Blodgett, I... Oh, pardon me. We must have forgotten to pay the cover charge. <laughs> now, here's what I was going to try to tell you. When... How are you? How are you? Say, may I use your room a minute? You might as well. Everybody else has. Thanks. I'm in the play tomorrow, and I want to see that my drama's in tune. to be okay. Yeah. I hope it rains all over the parade. <laughs> Can you beat that? Listen, Blodgett, if I ever have a honeymoon, remind me not to come to this hotel. <laughs> We've got to work fast. The Commodore's due in the next room at 12 o'clock. I've got to get a woman within the next three minutes. <laughs> hey, what time is it? Here. 
logic. This room must be on a public highway. Yes, but how about the woman we got to get? Oh, that's it. All right. Not now, not now, no. Somebody woke me up in the hallway. Did you hear anything? Not a thing. Not a sound. I'll be back later. All right. And close that door as you leave, please. That'll be fine. What'll be fine? Floating power. <laughs> oh, this is enervating. A woman. Where will I find a woman? Oh, I beg your pardon. I'm sorry, but you're not the type. Uh, now, but you don't understand. I want to take a bath. Where's the bathroom? Well, I'm very sorry, but we don't know. We've only been here a few weeks ourselves. <laughs> oh, thank you. I didn't know this was Saturday night. <laughs> now, what was I think? Oh, a woman. I'll tell what I'll do. I'll phone Sylvia. The phone, quick. Connect with Mr. Beasley's room. Hello. Hello, Sylvia. Hive speaking. Is Beasley there? He's not? Good. Listen, Sylvia, you got to come up to my room right away. At this hour of the night? Why, Mr. Hyde. Now, don't argue with me, silly. This is vital. It's for the good of the party. Then you'll be right up. Good. Hooray! Sylvia's coming up. She'll turn the trick. Hooray! We're, We're going to frame the Commodore. The Commodore. The Commodore. The Commodore. We're They're coming back. Boys, I got him. Good. No, he didn't. Oh, oh my. Blodgett, this bedroom borders on Bedlam. That's a lot of bees, Hive. Always the wag, even under fire. <laughs> that must be Sylvia. Come in. Sylvia, I'm so glad you're here. Well, tell me. What's the idea of this? Now, don't pay any attention to him. That's all a mistake. Now, this is no time to ask questions. Here's the whole thing in a nutshell. Sit down, and I'll tell you all about it. So you see, Sylvia, you must be the unknown woman. All right, I'll do it. It's for my husband's sake and for the good of the party. The good of the party, that's the spirit. Now, here's your instructions. When the Commodore arrives, go into his room. He'll probably want to kiss you. Tell him that you're very shy and that he must close his eyes. Then leave the rest to me. But what if he wants... He's here now. I can hear him. Good, he'll soon be in my clutches. <laughs> now, Silicons, do your stuff. And don't forget to make him close his eyes when he kisses you. All right, goodbye. And good luck, Sylvia. Hey, Mrs. Winchell, get away from that keyhole. Quick, get the flashlight and the camera. Come in. Hello, hello. Come right in. Oh, this is so informal, but thrilling. <laughs> Hurry, Blodgett. She's got him right where we want him. All right, but remember, keep your eyes closed. Keep them closed tight. I'm all ready for it. Well, here it is. No! And let that be a lesson to you, you bald-headed old weasel. You can't do that. I know my rights. Come back here. Excelsior! Hello, hello. A man by the name of Hives living in this hotel? Connect me with his room. A B. Oglethorpe for Hives is speaking. The Commodore talking. Ah, the Commodore. Oh, what's wrong? What's wrong? Everything's wrong. A fine fixer you are. Turned out to be a bloomer, eh? A bloomer? Worse than that. I got my face slapped. Well, those things happen. Wasn't my I'm fault. I'm telling you right now, I won't stand for this. Right. I know my rights. All right. I've studied law. Yeah, I know. Equity for equity. Yeah, all right. You promised to do something, and you all right. didn't do it. All right, all right. Let me tell you, I, I have lived in this town all my life. All right. All right. And my father and his brother. All right. I come from a long way. All right. A family that is proud of its long and faithful service to this community. All right. If anybody hears about this, All right. I'll have you tarred and feathered. All right. I'm out of town. I told you my grandfather was a baker. My father was a baker. All right. And I'm a baker. All right. And my career is at stake. You got the pip and now. You are not uh, going to jeopardize my character. All right. I have served this town in every position in the community. 
All right. To the best of my ability, I have led a clean right. and honest campaign, and you or no one else will say a word against it. I tell you, the pips have a reputation to hold. All right. And they are going to hold it. And remember that, Spinal. All right. Well, I'm glad that's over. Everything's fine. We got the Commodore just where we wanted. <laughs> now I can get some sleep. Come on, move over here. Move over? Well, you don't expect you to sleep in this bed, do you? Certainly. Why, it's hardly large enough for me. This is my bed. Where am I going to sleep? Well, I don't care where you sleep. Sleep on the floor. Sleep in the other room. And take your junk out of my bathroom. Oh, all right, anything to get some sleep. I'd have visions if I slept with you. The service in this hotel is noisy but novel. Just a moment, old pal. I want to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with you. What about? I haven't been treating you right lately, Blodgett. I haven't been giving you a square deal. I've been acting like a cad and a bounder. Now, to show you that I'm going to turn over a new leaf and do the right thing, I'm going to let you sleep in this good old bed tonight, and I'll sleep in the other room. Well, make up your mind. I've done that already, Blodgett. Can I get you a glass of water, Blodgy? No, good night. Good night, old boy. Look, it's the Countess. Well, I wonder where she came from. She's walking in her sleep. She's a somnambulist. Somnambulist? Don't show on her. Please, Blodgy. She picked a fine hotel to sleepwalk in. Hey, you... <laughs> Don't do that, you fool. Don't waken her. It's dangerous. Look, she's getting up. I wish she'd light someplace. Yeah. She should carry an anchor. <laughs> well, that's that, Bludgeon. Yep. We won't worry about her. No, indeed. She'll be all right. I hope so. Well, good night. Good night. Good night, old boy. Good night. and arrows. Oh, that'll be fine. Well, good night, Blodgett. Good night, and if anything happens, just call me. If I call you, you'll know that nothing happened. For the good of the party. Thank you.